16 years ago this month, a tidal wave of coal ash burst through a retaining wall at TVA's Kingston plant outside Knoxville. It took more than a billion dollars and six years to clean up. But what happened to the cleanup workers? A new book examines how many have fallen sick and some have died. Wow, that's nasty looking. Once you see that footage, it sticks with you. It is so dramatic. Jared Sullivan remembers when he first heard about the disaster. I was a senior in high school. I remember watching the footage on News Channel 5. Wow, look at that house there. It was days before Christmas in 2008. A tidal wave of coal ash burst through a retaining wall, damaging homes and burying 300 acres in sludge. I remember TVA's PR people coming out and saying, this stuff is not toxic, don't worry about it. It's a byproduct of the coal burning process. It's a material called Cenosphere, and that material is inert. So TVA says it's not harmful. And I, like a lot of other Tennesseans, shrugged my shoulders and thought, okay, great. Well, it turns out that was not the truth. Sullivan has devoted the last five years to writing a book about the disaster and the workers who cleaned up the mess. The system failed these workers. He had a, a terrible cough from the ash. His breathing was bad. He, um, he had a lot of headaches. Janie Clark and Betty Johnson believe the coal ash killed their husbands. Both were some of the first to respond and among the more than 50 workers who have died. This is the part I have to live with. Why didn't I gather that that was making him sick? But they kept saying, well, this, there's no problem here. And uh, so I trusted them. Ansel Clark and Tommy Johnson worked together on a fuel truck at the site. Both came home caked in coal ash day after day, but were assured it was safe. They were told they could eat a pound of it and it wouldn't bother them. They were told in the media. But memos reveal TVA was concerned about coal ash long before the Kingston disaster. In 1964, TVA's Director of Health wrote to supervisors about fly ash fallout at its Paradise, Kentucky steam plant. It cited detrimental effects on the paint of employees' cars. Tests revealed definite corrosive tendencies of the dampened fly ash. They did not want the public to find out how bad the ash was. They never took ownership of the things that was in the ash. Coal ash has arsenic, mercury, radium, and other toxins. TVA has insisted those things are in such low levels that coal ash poses no serious threat to human health. It is meant to be contained. But when TVA officials testified to Congress right after the disaster, they admitted in written responses that staffers downplayed the health risks of coal ash right after the incident. The private firm TVA hired to clean up the site insisted that since coal ash was not hazardous at Kingston, the workers did not need protective gear, despite spending day after day in the ash. When they first came into my office, it looked like they had come out of a coal mine. They couldn't breathe, their eyes were bloodshot. Attorney Jim Scott remembers when some of the workers first told him the ash was making them sick. The workers claimed they were not allowed to wear masks or respirators on site. I thought, oh, surely to God, no, because, you know, you, you can go see people mowing lawns with a mask. You Scott see, said he couldn't believe they could not wear masks, and he wanted proof. Give it a couple more days, about a week. That's when a worker showed him this cell phone video. The worker said his sinuses were acting up. He asked a supervisor if he could wear a mask on the cleanup site. Give it a couple more weeks, take an Allegra or two, it's the pollen. the pollen. At first, the supervisor blames pollen for his symptoms. When the worker pushes further and questions whether he'd lose his job if he wore a mask, the supervisor makes it clear. You think I'd hang myself? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, don't. <laughs> don't what? Don't hang yourself with your own He threatened him with his job. And there were many threats to workers with their jobs if they were to wear um, respiratory protection. Why keep going to work there? Because he had to provide for his family. He went to provide for his family. He wouldn't make his family. Uh, he was a family man. Janie Clark said Ansel did not complain, even as he got sicker. He knew the pay was good and times were tough.
these workers were were expendable because they were just in their in their minds they were just union hires in a lawsuit involving more than 200 workers attorneys argued the private company tva hired jacobs engineering generally did not allow masks because it would have scared the public and slowed the cleanup if you wear a respirator you have to have a downtime. But there was a real premium on get this cleaned up fast. Oh, yes. It was speed and production over humanity. Sullivan's book follows the workers and their federal lawsuit. A federal jury found Jacobs Engineering failed to provide workers with adequate protective gear, which could have likely caused lung cancer, skin cancer, and leukemia. The company reportedly paid a $77.5 million settlement, but admitted no wrongdoing. The workers were collateral damage. We do not take care of blue collar workers in this country or in this state, especially. One of the last things Ansel Clark did before he died with a rare form of blood cancer was take a cross to the disaster site where he and others worked for years. That cross sits there now in memory of the workers. I think about him every single day, all day. And uh, I know that he, he wouldn't have been down there and done that if it hadn't been trying to take care of us.